Susan Orlean, The Library Book. How does a fire change the course of a historic library's story? In The Library Book, Susan Orlean takes us through the pivotal events surrounding the 1986 Los Angeles Central Library fire. Orlean explores the mystery of the fire's origins, the aftermath of damage to over 700,000 books, and the massive community effort that brought the library back to life. Within the book's pages, you will find discussions about the role of libraries in modern society as well as the history of the LA Central Library and its transformation over time. Prepare to dive into a captivating narrative of resilience, sense of community, and the power of human intellect in the face of adversity. The Devastating Fire at Los Angeles Central Library On April 29, 1986, a seven-hour and 38-minute fire raged through the stacks of the Los Angeles Central Library, damaging over 700,000 books. The library had been discussing sprinkler placement that day, and despite the American Library Association's warning against sprinkler use, the fire department had installed them in the building. The damage was extensive, and the cost of replacing the books was estimated to be around $14 million. Fortunately, librarians and volunteers were able to pack the damaged and undamaged books for freezer storage or the book depository. The library then created an electronic catalog, which millions of people now use. The campaign to restock the library was led by Lodric Cook, the president of ARCO, and raised $10 million by 1991. Reconstruction began on June 3, 1988, and the library restored its original building while adding a new wing for the stacks. The grand reopening took place on October 3, 1993, and drew 50,000 people, all eager to get library cards. The Mysterious Library Fire Harry Peak, a likable but unreliable out-of-work actor, was the prime suspect in the biggest library fire in U.S. history. Though he repeatedly claimed responsibility, he failed a polygraph test, and the truth remains elusive. Harry's habit of lying in tall tales overshadowed his hint of first-hand knowledge of events that witnesses corroborated. The mystery remains unsolved, and nobody knows for certain what happened on the day of the fire. The Unsolved Mystery of the Library Arson Harry Peake's lawsuit against the city of Los Angeles for false arrest and slander due to involvement in the library arson case stalled after he changed his story. The case was settled for $35,000. Arson Research Project founder Paul Bieber analyzed the reports on the fire and concluded that the point of origin couldn't be determined, and old wiring may have caused the fire instead. The possibility of arson challenges the negative corpus reasoning that investigators use to determine arson cases. In 1986, the Los Angeles Public Library caught fire, causing the loss of over one million books and leading to the biggest loss to any public library in the history of the United States. Harry Peak, a local odd job worker, was arrested for the fire. However, city officials declined to charge him due to a lack of concrete evidence. The author of the book, Susan Orlean, posits that Peake probably didn't start the fire on purpose, although he may have accidentally caused it. Due to the lack of evidence, Peake filed a $15 million suit against the city on allegations of false arrest and slander. The city countered this with a $23.6 million claim for compensation related to fire damages. The case stalled as Peake changed his story multiple times, although his main alibi stayed the same. He decided to settle down and become a medical assistant, but he contracted HIV, AIDS soon after. Peake's lawyer sought an expedited case, leading to a settlement of $35,000. The lack of knowledge of the fire's point of origin led the investigators to believe it must be arson. However, modern forensic techniques like those used by Paul Bieber challenged this negative corpus reasoning particularly in light of evidence showing that old wiring may have caused the fire, and arson may not have been the cause at all. The Ever-Evolving Role of Libraries John Sabo, the city librarian of an eight-story library building, sees the library as part DIY university, part community center, and part information hub. 
Despite the rise of high-tech offices, the library boasts numerous special collections, including an extensive photography collection that includes images from Ansel Adams and Roland Curtis. Unfortunately, the library is not without its problems, as thieves routinely plunder it. Additionally, the library has become a shelter and internet access point for the homeless population in Los Angeles, which has grown to nearly 60,000 people according to 2017 data. Despite these challenges, the library remains an important institution in the community. Burning of Libraries Throughout History Libraries have been burned many times throughout history. The Library of Alexandria was burned multiple times, and the Mayan culture was erased by Spanish conquistadors. In the Middle Ages, the Pope ordered Catholics to burn Jewish books, and the Nazis burned books by Jewish authors. Even today, libraries continue to be casualties of conflict and arson. Despite efforts to protect cultural property, the destruction of libraries has not stopped. The Evolution of LA's Library System The history of the Los Angeles public library system is a fascinating one. The system, which started with strict restrictions, evolved into a community center accessible to all. The journey was not without its hurdles, including sexism, racism, and scandals. However, with the help of influential figures, the LA system has become one of the most prestigious and diverse in the country. This is the story of how the LA library system transformed and shaped the profession of librarianship. It all started in 1873 when the first official library in LA was established. However, women were only allowed in the ladies' room, and children were not permitted to enter. Librarians discouraged excessive novel reading, and most books were unavailable for browsing, which defeated the purpose of a library. In 1880, Mary Foy became the first woman chief librarian in the United States, but it wasn't until Tessa Kelso took over in 1889 that the system truly evolved. Kelso eliminated membership fees, made most books available for browsing, and welcomed children over the age of 12. She envisioned the library as a community center and hoped to lend out sports equipment, board games, and even magic lanterns. As more libraries appeared nationwide, women saw an opportunity to enter the profession of librarian, which had previously been one of the few open to them. The libraries became prestigious institutions, and the profession became increasingly diverse. In 1900, Mary Letitia Jones became the first head librarian to graduate from a library school. She hired African Americans to run branches in majority black neighborhoods and curated collections related to black history. However, she was forced to step down after five years because the board thought a man should run the library. That man turned out to be Charles Fletcher Lummis, who aimed to create the best collection in America. While he implemented various improvements, including branding pseudoscientific books with a skull and crossbones to warn the public away, his scandals and bad judgment eventually led to his forced resignation. The system saw a massive improvement in 1926 when a bond issue was approved for a standalone library, designed by New York architect Bertram Goodhue. The building featured a central pyramid shaped tower that displayed quotes about learning and sculptures of famous literary characters, writers, and thinkers. It was a representation of the power of human intellect and storytelling. In conclusion, the LA public library system has faced many challenges throughout its history but with determination and influential leaders, it has transformed into one of the most prestigious and diverse in the country. A Journey Through Downtown LA Library's Turbulent Times The story of the downtown LA library is one of resilience and survival. In the 60s and 70s, it faced multiple challenges, from a ban on coffee makers, inadequate lighting, and neglect to nearby riots. Even librarians labeled it a hazardous work environment and advocated for its demolition. But fate intervened, and a group of architects had the building designated as a historical cultural monument. Conservative groups later targeted the library's services as something for hippies and other night people. Yet, it survived, and the reference desk remains popular even today. The library eventually raised millions by selling air rights and underground rights, which helped to renovate and expand its interior space. 
The story of the downtown LA library is a testament to human resilience and determination. The Everlasting Relevance of Libraries Despite the prevalence of technology and the widespread belief that libraries have become obsolete, they are still very much relevant in today's society. Younger generations are enrolling in library science programs and utilizing their services more than older generations. Libraries offer not only free workspaces but also provide a vital community center where people can come together and learn. From maker fairs to English conversation classes, libraries continue to adapt and serve as a valuable resource to the public. In The Library Book, Susan Orlean chronicles the story of Los Angeles Central Library's fire, the community response, and the greater significance of libraries. The tale weaves together compelling accounts of historic librarians, controversies surrounding the fire, and the monumental effort to rebuild and save the books. The book serves as a testament to the importance of preserving knowledge, stories, and culture within communities, despite the challenges and mysteries surrounding them. At its core, the library book highlights the enduring spirit of libraries as essential institutions for promoting learning, community, and the timeless power of human intellect.